The PERSIST program was um, evaluating pacritinib, which is a JAK2, FLT3, IRAC1 inhibitor. Um, PERSIST1 was a study um, evaluating uh, pacritinib uh, versus best available therapy in patients who were uh, JAK inhibitor naive. And in that case, best available therapy excluded ruxolitinib. And PERSIST2, and I have to mention, in PERSIST1, there was uh, no baseline platelet count. So you could have a low platelet count, you could have a high platelet count. In PERSIST2, it really focused in on a very um, uh, sick patient population. These were patients who uh, had low platelets at baseline, so less than 100,000, and could have seen uh, ruxolinib or any JAK inhibitor previously, in which 50% of them did. And they were randomized to two doses, uh, pacritinib at 200 milligrams twice daily or pacritinib 400 milligrams once daily versus best available therapy, which could then include, again, ruxolinib. So in PERSIST2, it's an unusual study. Um, patients could have seen ruxolinib previously. They could be randomized to ruxolinib. Um, and the primary, co-primary endpoint of that study was spleen volume reduction and symptom improvement. From the PERSIST1 study, we had included individuals with a very advanced myelofibrosis because of the marked thrombocytopenia. There was a period of a clinical hold on the drug uh, that the FDA had instituted due to concerns regarding some mortality which occurred on the study. Subsequent data from the PERSIST1 study and the PERSIST2 study helped to demonstrate that that probably was a reflection of adverse patient uh, selection than necessarily toxicity from the drug. In the PERSIST2 study, there appeared to be superiority of a lower dose of the drug administered twice a day versus a higher dose of the drug administered once a day, so that there was a pharmacokinetic benefit in terms of efficacy and safety due for a split dose. So there's currently completing accrual of the Percritinib 203 study trying to uh, further refine this minimally effective dose and the safety profile to uh, lead potentially to a more formal indication. The pacritinib, again, is a JAK2 inhibitor, but it also has, it's also a FLT3 inhibitor, an IRAC1 inhibitor, and a CSF1 receptor inhibitor, too. So it, it like most of these drugs, none of these drugs um, are truly specific for JAK2. And I think that's really the most important point, specifically for a clinician who's trying to understand, you know, why these drugs would be different and how they could uh, offer um, clinical uh, improvement uh, where maybe another drug cannot. And I think it really boils down to the fact that um, although they're all JAK2 inhibitors, they share differences in, in, different, um, uh, in different targets too. And again, that probably uh, explains why there's differences in toxicity, but also probably explains why one drug may be more effective and may be more beneficial either uh, in lieu of or in sequence to another drug. All three of them are, are, are targeted in the sense that they're JAK2 in inhibitors, but all three of them also have a specificity for other receptors as well. Um, so, you know, the, it, you know, one of the things that I think um, we as a research community have to keep in mind is we often think, oh, targeted is the way to go. We need a, a super selective targeted agent, where in reality is sometimes we stumble upon the fact that having a, a dirty agent that can, that can affect multiple different pathways can actually be uh, more beneficial because the reality is that these diseases are not so simple. They're complex and multiple pathways are activated. So it's not always true um, that the super, selective, um, super selectivity of a targeted agent uh, will necessarily make it better than a drug that has a multi kinase inhibition profile. If pacritinib was commercially available, I mean, the, the place I could see it uh, fitting into the treatment algorithm would be uh, first-line therapy in patients with platelet counts less than 50,000, which is an unmet need that currently ruxolinib cannot fill. To me, that's the most obvious, and that's probably about 10 to 15 percent of patients up front. I think pacritinib could also fit the need um, second line for patients who develop significant thrombocytopenia um, on ruxolinib, um, or even in that matter for patients who have um, significant anemia on ruxolinib. Pacritinib will most clearly be indicated in individuals with marked thrombocytopenia with myelofibrosis. In particular, those with a plate account of under 50,000 for which ruxolinib is currently not indicated. Now, the benefits may well extend beyond that group for other individuals with a more advanced disease. Further data as it relates to the analysis of molecular mutations, differential effect, I think will clearly come at play. If pacritinib were the next agent approved, I think we would be considering its use 
in two groups. One, potentially as upfront therapy in individuals with marked thrombocytopenia, and second, potentially a second-line therapy in individuals that have failed ruxolitinib. Lispatercept is a very interesting drug. This is um, a drug that's really geared at addressing anemia. It's not really a drug um, intended to improve spleen or symptoms. Its mechanism of action is novel. Uh, so, for example, for many, for many years, uh, hematologists in both uh, the treatment of myelodysplastic syndrome and myelofibrosis have used drugs called erythropoiesis stimulating agents, ESAs. These are drugs that essentially mimic the hormone uh, erythropoietin and try to stimulate the bone marrow to make red cells. A loose patercept is an example of an EMA, an erythropoiesis uh, maturation agent. And this is a drug that um, is a ligand trap. So it's a receptor for activin receptor 2 ligands um, that's conjugated to an immunoglobulin and essentially uh, blocks the interaction of activins, which are TGF beta superfamily members, with their receptor. And by doing so, downregulates SMAD signaling, which ultimately leads to the uh, double negative of removing repression of erythropoiesis, so it allows for erythrocytes to mature.